anytime I talk on this channel about how much I love the Star Wars EU, I get a lot of people being like, that sounds pretty cool. So where should I start? Well, guys, I think this is a great time to go back to that galaxy far, far away. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back today to talk a little Star Wars EU, because anytime I talk about how much I love the Star Wars EU, people always ask, where should I start? And I always give them the answer, and they haven't seemed to be very uh, accepting of just that answer. So I thought the best way to do is kind of be break it up by eras and kind of talk about if I think that you guys can start there. Now, if you don't know, the Star Wars Expanded Universe is now called Legends. It is what was the, uh, you know, just basically canon before Disney acquired the license in, what, 2015? Is that how long ago it was now? So... Uh, but this universe obviously is not considered canon anymore, but people like myself that grew up with it and have followed it, and honestly, I think it's a lot better than what Disney has provided. It's always going to be something that is special to us, and uh, we can always talk about why. So, this was my MCU growing up, guys. It was really you know, a connected universe. Every three months or so, we got you know a new book that was you know one connected universe and an overall story with different authors contributing to it. You know, like I said, every couple of months we had a new book. It was really, really great. So it was hard for us to let go of it, but uh, really we're going to kind of talk about why. I've talked about that in the past, really, about why that will always be uh, you know, what I consider canon. But uh, with this, we're going to talk about where I think that you guys should start. Because I usually will just say, yeah, start with the Thrawn trilogy. And people were like, but what else? So I think now is a good time to kind of go into it if that isn't just the only answer that you want. So anytime I can drum up some interest in the uh, in, in the, to, you know new readers to get into the original Star Wars EU, I understand it can be kind of daunting to look at because there's a ton of books. There's a ton of books and they don't just exactly have that timeline posted for people or if it's something that you feel like you need to read to get the full story. So let's go ahead and begin like this. We're gonna go by era. Like I said, that begins with the rise of the Empire era. Now, I won't be—I will be honest with you guys. I haven't spent a lot of time in here because I'm really into the New Republic, which takes place after the original trilogy. All of this takes place uh, before and uh, after the prequel series. Uh, so. With this, it's about that thousand-year stretch before the Battle of Yavin. That's the first Death Star run in A New Hope, in case you don't know these terms. Uh, but like I said, it's a stretch I haven't explored a ton. So it's going to be kind of hearsay and some things that I just I think that I would recommend based off of having read them. I, I obviously think the, uh, the novelizations of the prequels is a good idea. Uh, regardless of how you feel about those movies, I feel like uh, the... I feel like the novelizations got the story across a little better than they might have gotten on screen, but I'm one of those who feel like the the sequels were so bad it's made the prequels great in hindsight. So, <laughs> but again, that's a, that's beating a dead horse at this point. Uh, but I gotta say, my favorites of this whole thing, this whole time period, is known as the Han Solo trilogy by A.C. Crispin. It's Paradise Snare, The Hut Gambit and Rebel Dawn. Now, what I like about these is you get a lot of those questions answered that we have in the movies. Let's hear about Han's time actually serving in the Empire. Let's hear about why he has that debt to settle with Jabba the Hutt. Let's hear about why Chewbacca has a life debt to Han Solo. What led him to walking into that cantina on Mos Eisley? It has all those answers in this trilogy. So it's a really, really good read if you are really, really interested in finding out about Han Solo's past and why. He was quite more of a scoundrel than, you know, that scoundrel with a heart of gold that we came to know him as. So uh, it's a really good peek behind the curtain. Like I said, it leads right into New Hope, which is just excellent. That's a good place to talk about, guys. The Rebellion Era. Now, the Rebellion Era, which is also known as the Galactic Civil War, is roughly about an eight-year stretch. That's from uh, the Rebel, when the Rebel Alliance was formed. Uh, it runs a little too after uh, the end of Return of the Jedi. So with this, I think the best place to start, obviously, if you haven't, the novelizations, of the original trilogy, episode four, five, and six is still a very, very good read. I don't care how many times you've watched those movies. You know what? Hey, you can envision it in your head. Look at these kind of like a director's cut, if you will. I think that's, but they're they're pretty, you know, much word for word since it was written by George Lucas. So it's it's not going to be a ton of change from the actual screenplay, but still, it's fun to read some of these things. And uh, the next one, guys, uh, if you could start here, I think so because I think it takes place between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. And I say I think so because I've never actually read the X-Wing series, but I plan to, guys. I know people have been yelling at me for this for a while. I didn't read the X-Wing books because I was like, 
I don't need book series about wedge Antilles, but you know what? There's a lot more to it than that. There's lots of Luke stuff in here. So uh, I'm planning on picking up Rogue Squadron here sometime this fall and actually starting that myself. But this is a very, very popular series with uh, within the EU fandom. They really, really do love this series. So uh, I got to say, yeah, I think you could probably start there because all you need to see is the first movie. So that's a very good place to start. Now, I think this one, Shadows of the Empire, this is a must read. If you've only seen the original trilogy, this is a must read because you know how you finish Empire Strikes Back and we're just like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? And then you start Return of the Jedi and you feel like, what's going on here? How much time has passed? This answers all those questions, explains everything that happened between episodes four or five and six. So between Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back, this gap while Han's frozen in carbonite. Now that's the only thing about it. You don't get Han Solo in this book, but you get Darth Vader. So... That's something you don't get with a lot of later EU books. You know, no more Darth Vader, obviously. But this is just a great story. You get introduced to Dash Rendar, which is one of my favorite like Han Solo clones. I think it's done pretty much the best. And Prince Zizor is an awesome, awesome villain. You get to see how ruthless Darth Vader can be when his his uh, position is threatened. Let's put it that way. But you get some insight into how he feels about Luke. He's, you're seeing the, the internal conflict that Luke obviously references in Return of the Jedi. You get a lot of that stuff in here. So it's a very, very, very good look at what happened during that time span. Now, uh, outside of that, I think Tales from Jabba's Palace is really, really good. If you really like that stuff in Jabba's Palace, I feel like this is what they wanted to do with Book of Boba Fett. They just kind of missed the mark. But if you're really interested in like the underground crime organization and some of the street level crime, I think this is a really, really cool read for you. It's, it's several stories, so it's not going to be uh, too, too rough if you just want to kind of split it up. And of course, the courtship of Princess Leia and Truce at Backer, which I actually can't find my paper back up because I guys I have a ton of these and they are very very beat up uh, not like my books now where I take super good care of my used to loan these out and just read them like crazy throw them in my backpack in high school but uh yeah those two Prin uh, courtship of princess leia and truce at uh, bakura both of those you if you want to start there I guess you can it kind of ties up everything that happens after Return of the Jedi, leading us into that New Republic era, which we're going to talk about in a second. But yeah, that's pretty much everything that I would recommend. If you wanted to start there, you could. Uh, some of those I wouldn't really recommend that you start there, but you can. If you've only seen the original trilogy, I think you can go ahead and start there. But let's go ahead and move into my favorite era of the EU, guys. This is the New Republic era. So what is the New Republic era, you ask? Now, guys, this is about that, about a 30-year stretch that begins about five years after Return of the Jedi. So the Empire is still kind of kicking around. They're not quite taking as much of a threat as you know as they were in the, during the uh, during that time. But you do see that the New Republic, that the uh, the, the Rebel Alliance, has, has started to kind of create a new uh, government. It's it's not as easy as they thought. Is it ever? You know, reestablishing a government is, is going to be really really tough. So the best place. This is always the answer I get when anybody says, "Where should I start?" I always say the Thrawn trilogy. By Timothy Zahn. To my to this day, this is still my favorite Star Wars books that there are. I've read them so many times. I don't know if you can see how beat up these things are. I've read these so many times. They're kind of yellowed at this point because they're so old. When these came out, it was it was just an event. So you went into the bookstore and people were like playing like they were playing like the soundtracks of the movies and stuff. Because this was like the first like real feeling continue. I know they had like Splendor of the Mind's Eyes like that, but this was the first time where it felt like, oh, not only are they making new Star Wars books, but this is considered official history by george lucas it was a big deal and these books were so so good i've talked before on this channel about the thrawn trilogy and why i think it's special and why i think it still is a great read even if you've only seen those original movies because really it picks up all the storylines that you need you can absolutely 100 percent start here i think this is actually the best place to start because i mean if i tell you to start with courtship of princess leia or truce of Bakra, you're gonna be like is this the best that there is oh. No, I don't think so. I don't think this is where you should start at all. But I think Thrawn Trilogy is the place that you should start because you get introduced to a new villain. You know, we're kind of moving past just reminiscing about Darth Vader and the Emperor and you get to see that the Empire is still very much a threat and Thrawn is no joke. He is very different than Vader and he is very, very good. Uh, I, I don't want to say more. I feel like at this point, if you have it heard at least of Thrawn. I know that they put him into some of the new canon stuff, but uh, to me, he'll never be the same as he was now. Uh, I know that uh, even Timothy Zahn himself has been the one that's been rewriting him into the new Disney canon. And I don't know, that just feels like asking a band that had a really big hit in the 80s, uh, hit album, just ask them to write that album again, but make sure it kind of, it kind of, 
sticks to like what the record company wants him to do here. I don't know. It just didn't feel the same to me. So that's why I was always say, nah, no, nah, you're never going to replace that throne. After that, guys, I really say the Jedi Academy trilogy by Kevin J. Anderson. This was before he decided to go and ruin the Dune books uh, with, with Brian Herbert. Uh, he just, he wrote these Star Wars books that were actually really, really good. Uh, it's about Luke like reestablishing uh, the, the Jedi temples and trying to really just reestablish the Jedi way, you know, in training uh, new people and things like that, just rebuilding everything that had been lost up to that point. And you heard you see some things about uh, Jason and, and, and Jaina, uh, that's uh, the, the, solo, the solo twins. And you get to see a lot of things about the training that kind of leads into, uh, you know, uh, the young, uh, what is it called? Uh, the Young Jedi Knights. It's a YA series, but it really does get you really introduced to Jason and, and Jaina, which are going to be huge characters in New Jedi Order later. So if you want to start there, I think it's a great, great place If you because you do need to be introduced to those characters before you go into something like New Jedi Order. I'll show you like... What's the weight of this? Why should I care about these characters? I think it gives you a lot of weight to them. Another one in that time period that's kind of like a one-off is called I Jedi. Now, this is the introduction to Coran Horn. But actually, I believe he people have told me he was introduced in the uh, the X-wing series, so I might be wrong on that. This was my introduction to Coran Horn was I Jedi, and this kind of takes place, even has some of the same events that take place in the Jedi Academy trilogy, but it's from his point of view. So this is a very very important character. And I think that you should definitely pick it up. So uh, again, if you're wanting to start with like New Jedi Order, I think you should pick this one up first because it will get, give you a lot of context to who that character is. Uh, as for this one, the Corellian trilogy, Han Solo, uh, if my memory serves correctly, it's like uh, at this point, Leia is like a big time ambassador uh, with the New Republic and she has to do some things on Corellia. So she says, hey, why don't we just turn this into a family reunion with Han Solo, who has no interest to go back to where he grew up. He doesn't have fond memories there. So this, any backstory I feel like that was left for Han Solo was kind of covered in this. It's one of those where I feel like if you read the A.C. Crispin trilogy, the Han Solo ones, and you just loved it, and you feel like, I want to know even more about Han Solo, this will scratch that itch. But it's one of those I don't feel like is, is essential to the overall arc of the storytelling to where if you skip it, you're not, I mean, it's, it's fun reads. All, all, all these guys, all these are fun reads. But if you're just wanting like to main streamline the story, I don't think this one's imperative. But if you're a big Han Solo guy, and you should be, I think that you, you probably enjoy what you read here. The Callista trilogy is one that I've actually loaned out. So I don't have it actually to show you right now. I think that one's worth reading just for Darksaber alone. But like Corellia, it's, it's another one that's just a fun adventure trilogy. You don't have to read anything else if you want to read it. Uh, it can kind of stand on its own, but it's not imperative to the overall story arcs that were coming in New Jedi Order or closing off this era. So uh, that's why like I said Dark Saber is very important. Obviously, they're still using Dark Saber in the Disney canon now. It's really big on Mandalorian, obviously. So uh, that, that I think it's worth reading just for that one because that's a really really good story. Black Fleet Crisis. I think that's one that's another that's just fun. It's a fun adventure trilogy. It's nothing that you have to read. This is where we got to the point where it's like, okay, well, let's see how many of these like one-offs we can kind of do. And But they had to do them in a trilogy because they were selling so well. You know, you got it. This was the first part where I started to feel almost like a little bit of exhaustion from what was going on. Where it's like, okay, well, it just feels like these could have been, you know, spin-off movie trilogies. We got the characters that we know and love, but nothing's really serving an overall arc. It's just kind of a standalone story, which was still fun. But it didn't feel like it was actually like tying up anything where I felt like at this point, this really did feel like a series. You know, think it was going to keep on going. Now, that changed when Timothy Zahn returned with more Thrawn, with uh, with, uh, with the Hand of Thrawn duology, as it's called, Spectre of the Past, Vision of the Future. These were good reads. And I think that these are absolutely imperative to know more about the relationship of Luke Skywalker and Mara Jade. Now, if you don't know who Mara Jade is, you need to read the Thrawn trilogy. Mara Jade is probably the most popular EU character maybe ever. Uh, she's a very, very popular character right there with Thrawn, I think. Uh, beloved character. And uh, again, I I, I, I kind of hope they don't ever use Mara Jade in the Disney canon because it just it's not going to feel the same. It's going to kind of feel like when they bring Thrawn onto Mandalorian eventually. Uh, but again, that's just me. I'm not trying to just trash the Disney canon or whatever. Just It's hard for me because, you know, I've had these characters in my head canon for years and trying to put a new spin on them. But again, you need to read those just because that relationship with Luke and Mara goes to the next level in that series. So how about my favorite, guys? The New Jedi Order. <laughs> 19 books, guys. It's a 19 book series. I wasn't going to grab all these to show you guys, but I just thought that would make for a fun thumbnail. I don't know. Maybe I'll use it. Maybe I won't. I can't believe I didn't drop them. 
This reminds me back in the day when I worked at Blockbuster Video and we had to carry all those cassettes at once. I'm really showing my age now, ain't I? Uh, the New Jedi Order, I've talked at length on the channel. I did a Why You Should Read on the New Jedi Order. Should you start here? That's kind of a tough question because, I mean, while I think that you can, it's just it's going to be a little weird to you because it's going to be so many years after the original trilogy. And you're going to be like, uh, how do they get to where they're at right now? Who are these kids' characters? Because this is very much like a, not the passing of the torch, but very much the, okay, the kids are now central players in this universe. But what I love about this is, are you tired of the Empire? This is the next step in the evolution because this introduces the Yuuzhan Vong, which are very, very, very cool villains. And it's so different than the Empire. So, so different. But also, this was the point where I felt like Star Wars grew up. It felt like that. I don't want to say it went quite grimdark. There are some very grimdark moments on. I think about like Star by Star and Traitor in this series are some of the most dark moments in this entire series. But characters die. Uh, lots of things bad happen to a lot of our characters. It's, uh, I mean, it, it kicks off with killing a legacy character. You know, that's why I was, I think that's why I put off reading uh, anything by R.A. Salvatore for a while because, <laughs> because he killed a legacy character in his first book in this universe with Vector Prime. I cried, I'm not going to lie. But again, I, starting here, I mean, I, I guess you could. You're just going to be like, you're going to be wanting to look up Wikipedia or something like that to find out who are who are all these characters? What's going on here? So it's kind of a tough sell, but it's, it's hard for me to say no because I love the series so much and I think it does kind of have a story that stands on its own. It's just if you want the backstory for all those characters, you're going to have to read some more. Uh, so I, I think uh, I'll do a pinned comment down below of if you're interested in reading just the New Jedi Order, here's four or five books I think that you really should read before you start it just to understand everything that's going on. So I'll try to do that for it. But uh, it's hard for me to you know, discourage anyone from reading New Jedi Order because I love it so much. And I would love it if more Star Wars fans read it. This is where a lot of... A lot of EU fans tapped out. Like a lot of my friends at Real Big in the EU, they tapped out because it got so dark. It got so brutal. And they didn't like that. They liked Star Wars because it was fun. And it got to the point where, okay, there's serious stuff happening now. To me, I had grown up and I wanted Star Wars to grow up. And it was perfect timing for me. So it just kind of depends on what you are looking for, guys. If you want your Star Wars to be a little more serious and the stakes to be a little bit higher where you don't always feel like the good guys are going to win because plot armor says they do, this is kind of the series where I feel like that really started. And I love it. 19 books, guys, and I was sad to see it end. And it, to me, Unifying Force, the last book in the series, is where it really felt like the end of our original characters. It felt like the last time all those friends from high school were going to be in the same place together. It really did feel like the end because the series does really change after this. So let's talk about some of those other ones because uh, I feel like at this point you might be getting past if you should start here but let's let's talk about them okay how about Legacy of the Force now Legacy of the Force uh was this eight books nine books nine book series definitely don't think you should start here because I think this is when the uh, this is when the kids this is the next generation this is what I mean well Luke Han and Leia are still very much prevalent Lando's very much there but this is where the kids take the spotlight it really is Jason and Jana's story at this point I think that's kind of where we are headed. The, the Solo kids, the Skywalker kids, it's, it's just kind of the next generation, so to speak. So it would really seem odd starting here because you're talking, this is like 35 years after Return of the Jedi. So you're going to be like, why are these, why are our characters all so old? It would be really, really weird to start here. But if you've already read more, I'll say I, I definitely think you should read it because I think there's some really great character moments in it. Um, a certain bounty hunter that we all know and love made a, a big deal in this story. And when you finally get, I mean, there's crazy, you talk about deaths in New Jedi Order, they're nothing compared to some of the deaths that happened here. And anybody that New Jedi Order didn't break, this series did break them. Uh, and I'll be honest, guys, this was the last in the EU that I read, because there's one more series I'm going to spotlight here, but uh, I, I didn't read it. And, uh, well, let me grab them, I'll tell you why. All right, this last series here is called Fate of the Jedi, nine book series. It has some of the coolest covers in all of Star Wars. I mean, I, I love these covers. I think these covers are just excellent. To look at but here's the thing when these were coming out i was so wrapped up in other stuff and i got like three or four behind that was unusual with me with star wars books because i always just consider it like almost like that like like subscription magazine thing that you would read but i got so behind on it i was like okay i'll just wait for this series to finish and then i'll read it and then we got the news about the eu was being ended and it broke my heart <laughs> and it took a while to get over it so i just i never got to these and then it had been so long 
I was like, ah, oh, well, maybe I should just go back and I just want to reread the New Jedi Order again, you know? But uh, I just, I never got to it. I never have. And now I feel like if I pick it up where it is now, I'd just be lost and confused. So I just never really went back to it. So should you start there? No, absolutely not. Again, this is 40 years after A New Hope. You're going to be like, what? What is going on, you know? So, uh, no, I don't think so. And I mean, I'm well past the point of where I said that, you know, I think you should start. But I, I kind of want to give a reference point. So not only if you know where you should start, but if you've read some things, could, should you continue on? I think that's kind of some of the things I'm going at here. But again, it's the EU, guys. I could talk about it forever. And, and I know that people always ask me stuff. They've asked me to make Star Wars videos, and then I make them, and they don't do very much. But I'm going to keep always you know, putting up that fight because uh, Star Wars is the universe I've spent the most time of my reading life in. It's, I've spent no more time in any other universe, fictional universe out there. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a series that I will always love for, you know, ever since I was a kid until now, sharing it with my kids is something that'll never really get old to me. So uh, I, I always hear people all the time that haven't read these books but like, ah, oh, who cares if Disney scrapped the, you know, the expanded universe books, they were shit anyway. And I disagree. I disagree greatly. I don't feel like any... Is there shit in here? Yeah. I mean, any series that goes this long. I mean, look at something like uh, like Dritz or Warhammer. It's been going on forever. Sure, there's probably some books in there that aren't that good. It's going to happen any time. I think about some of my favorite TV shows, like X-Files, that went like 10 or 11 years. There's some garbage in there, but you know what? Most of it was amazing. You know, So that's kind of how I feel about the EU. But you kind of got to read it in order. I really think you do, or a lot of the stuff... The emotional moments aren't going to hit because you aren't going to be attached to those characters. So I know we've kind of gotten this, this attitude of serialized television where it's like, oh, if it doesn't advance the storyline, I don't want to read it. But you know what you're missing with that is you're missing character development. And you're missing that emotional attachment when bad things happen to these characters. So it really is something, guys, I think at the minimum, you got to start with Thrawn. I really do think that you need to start there. And if you love it, and I think you will if you love Star Wars, then keep going. And I can, like I said, I can provide a timeline for you guys. I can provide a, a streamlined timeline if you want to kind of cut out what many would call the fluff or the filler or stuff that isn't going to advance the main storyline. I can help you out there. So I hope that this video has made this a little bit clearer to you. And I hope that you will find some interest to get into these things. I'm excited to go back and start reading the X-Wing series for the first time. Because, guys, look, when the, when the EU got ended, I was accepting. I was like, okay, I understand. Disney doesn't want to have their hands tied to Canada. That they can't, you know, they don't want to, they want to do a storyline that they want to do and they can't because, and we can't because it was in this, you know, volume 72 of something. I understood why they did it. But it was kind of like what I said about the new Halloween movies. If you're going to scrap the canon, you better do something better. And they didn't. So to me, it's made it feel like this is even more exciting to go back and read now. I reread the Thrawn trilogy a couple years back now, and I loved it. So uh, I would, I wanted to kind of just start over and start doing it all. But, you know, then I started this channel, you know. <laughs> and I got bogged down with all this other stuff that I haven't read yet. But, man, I will always enjoy going back to the EU. And I hope you guys will give it a real shot. Start with Thrawn. Like I said, if you, if you just... Don't feel like you need to. There are other starting points that I mentioned in the video, but I think that that's a place where you're going to be like, these are all of the characters that I feel. I mean, Thrawn trilogy is so much like that original trilogy. You can damn hear John Williams' soundtrack in your head. It's so good, guys. So that's what I got, guys. I hope I didn't make it more confusing by talking about a bunch of books that I don't think that you should read right now because uh, that just happens when I start talking about the EU. I can just kind of go off on tangents like I'm doing right now. But hey... You guys asked for it. So I hope this cleared up something. So drop in the comments, guys. Let me know. Have you read the EU? Do you love it like I do? Do you uh, do you have uh, any other recommendations for where people should start? Start a conversation down below. Jump on the Discord. We can talk about there. we got a Star Wars channel over there where you guys can talk about these things. And uh, I will talk to you there.